Alors... So this morning, uh, actually late, it's the very start of the afternoon, we ended up um, taking pieces of painted paper, painted junk from kitchen food boxes, uh, you know, all kinds of little scrappy little things, and we made some beautiful cards with them. Then when we came back from lunch, we ended up doing pin cushions made out of, you know, icky old sweaters and felted afghans and stuff. So uh, now I've got another one for you. And then tomorrow we've got some. But I picked up these books. This one was 50 cents. Uh, Follett Beginning Science Book on Machines. It's got, uh, wow, yeah, looks like 50s art. Let's see if it's got a date in it. Uh, 1962. Wow. But it's got a, a few, it's a very thin little book. Uh, it's had some wear and tear. The covers are a little sticky. But uh, it's got a few little machine pictures in there. Very, very, very simple stuff. The pictures are kind of cool. They look like somebody actually drew them. So what I'm thinking is if you had an engineer in your life, or if you had just a, a guy that you needed some cards for, uh, you want to send your dad a card every now and then, uh, some of there's some of these pictures are just like tool pictures, which are always cool. Scissors and wrenches, and there's a wagon, and a pulley. So, you know, sometimes these are neat. When you find a children's book that kind of reminds you of somebody, um, especially if it's damaged, like all three of these are, or so out of date that you just don't see a, a kid looking at them anymore. Um, this is what I do. I tear them up and I make really cool stationery. So I try to look through the book and make sure that I'm going to get maybe um, at least seven or eight really nice images that I like. And there's that one from the front page. And I got the little boy mowing and the other guy on a tractor. But on the other side, this is one of those choice making things you have to do as an artist. On the other side, this is really cool little picture of a guy wrenching up a, a very pink car. So I'm going to hang on to that one. This one with the blender. I like it better on this side. The kid's teenager working on a blender. And here's a pulley and somebody pulling an American flag up. And as much as I love flags, there's more tools on the other side. So I think I like those, but the picture's not that great. Whole cream lever. Oh, here's a little uh, the audio visual kit there. And this one I like because it's got the tool. And you just go through and take the book, you know, rip the pages up or Sometimes they're just falling apart. You just lift the pages out, and I'm saving all the ones I like. Like I'm seeing a lot of uh, fulcrum and pulleys and axles and wheels, and um, this would be great. You know, somebody who's going off to engineering school, uh, somebody who's just really into tools, and uh, you can customize. You know, make them a set of cards for their birthday, just exactly the kinds of things they're into. That one I don't like so much. That one's kind of okay. That one's weird. Oh, bicycle and a gear. Little kid engineer there with his little pencil sharpening with the augers. There's a guy on a construction site using a, a digger. And that's it. Now, most of the time there's really neat uh, frontispieces pieces here, but there aren't. Now, you might have a friend that does books, in which case what they'll do is they'll take this part out and they'll reuse the cover, you know, to create a little notebook. They can either paint or design this or add something else onto it, and they'll put their own pages and use it as a book. Um, if you don't want to use it for that, this real nice heavy uh, cardboard, um, it's it's good for everything from scraping, picking up, make a, you know, make a shovel, whatever. So I don't throw anything away. If I can't think of something to do with it right now, I just wait. I'll think of something. Or someone else will come in and say, oh, I've got this new craft and I'm using, and I'll say, oh, i got a box of them right over there. So we've got a few of these. I like those. I don't need the inside of the book. This one is Dazzle the Dinosaur, 50 cents. And the frontispiece has a nice full color picture. And this is kind of cool with the little, oh, the one on the other side is better, though. i got a little dinosaur. Messing around with their little nest of eggs. Here's another one. Trying to think when I cut this down to card size. Really big images don't work as well as the smaller ones. Ah, ah that'll work. 
That's a cute little one. Background picture. Mm, not so much. Yeah, that'll work. Looks like they got some kind of a little prism foil there for some of them. There's another good one. You just go through and, you know, usually I'll do a great big stack of books this way. I like that big picture. You know, lots of people like dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. You get to make that choice. It's like, hmm, I like both sides. Beautiful artwork. That one will clip into a small picture very well. This one will. So you're just going to go through. I'll save the other book, and I don't have to do it today. But uh, this is what you'll do. You'll go through the book. And as I said, when you're just looking through the kids' books, and you sometimes you'll just see something, and you'll say, oh, geez, that reminds me of so-and-so. And like I said, some, some artists need the covers, so don't pitch them until you ask around. So... I've got an extra book there, but we'll just concentrate on these two. Got my trusty gingers out. And first thing to do is I'm going to use a fairly small pre-made card for these that I picked up. There's my box of them over at uh, Joanne Fabrics. You can catch them 40 and 60% off. And I like them because they have a little bit of color to them. I find that my double-sided tape doesn't stick excessively well to um, the brown craft ones. But this is the image I'm going to want to have. So I know it's got to be trimmed a little bit. And I want a little bit of a border around it for extra color. So we're going to lose a little bit of the top of the crane. Down to side, just like up, not chop his foot off. We're going to lose a little bit of the tool he's on. Almost up to the back of the crane. And I think I can take a little more of the... We still know it's a crane if I do that. So I've got that part done. I think it's going to go on one of these yellow cards. So there's a pretty blue in here. At the thrift store, I got this great big honking whack of blue. I mean, of, of different colors. And it was $1.99 for almost a ream of card stock. And none of them were damaged. But they had been opened, so they just stuck a new price on it. So that's all there is to it. You're just going to coordinate those colors out. And, you know, it looks just like it came right out of a Hallmark store. Now, I don't really care about things being perfect. You know, my thing with art is I like working with the materials. And I like the, um, the tactileness of actually using the scissors and, or using a razor blade or an ultra cutter. Um, I'm not so... I, I, I'm not worried about whether it's real, real straight. Uh, some people, that's very important. So, of course, for you, I'd say get an OFA cutter with a see-through template that you can, you know, cut the shapes out on. Uh, measure and decide ahead of time exactly how big you want them to be and so on. And they will look just, you know, perfect, perfect crisp. Um, me, the colors are important. But uh, the fact that it looks like I whacked it out with my scissors, it doesn't seem to affect how they sell. And, it, you know, I, I like that sense of handmadeness about it. Um, you know, we argue all day about whether handmade has to mean not as perfect. Um, but for me, it doesn't. It just doesn't. Okay, I got a kid sharpening his pencil here. Trim it out. Now, of course, if you are using a book that has really big pictures, you might want to opt for the 5 by 8 cards or one of the, the bigger ones. And uh, this blue is pretty close to the blue card that's in here. And I don't have this shade of red in my little pile. So I'm actually going to discount that. And not pink. How's the yellow look? There we go. So we're going to have the same color scheme as the last time. Now you'll find that often that you'll have um, a whole entire book is made with a, a similar palette. So uh, it might be that you end up with yellow cards all looking good underneath all of them. And uh, you can always pick a one color card. There's the next one. And you can see, because it came from the same book and the same artist, the same printing, you can see that a lot of the same colors are used. We ended up with the same mat and the same card. So, and that happened. Now I lucked out. The publisher put 
one of them on the bottom of one page and the other one on the top of the next. And that meant I got two pictures instead of just one. Just trim that all off. Now there's a little bit of a bluish green in here. That might do better. Eh, it's still kind of dark. Let's see. I've got more cards over here. Fish around. Mm, not a bad color, but still it's kind of on the dark side. I wonder what the green would look like. I can live with that. So here's my orangey red. Cut a bit of this out. I know that's just, you know, somebody with a really strong sense of everything's got to be straight and must just be like, you know, clutching at their neck on the floor right now. But, uh, yeah, there's one thing as artists that it's perfectly okay the way you do it and it's perfectly okay the way I do it. It's not about whether it sells or not. You know, are you, are you creating something? And that's the most important thing. It bothers me when people are so hung up about whether they're doing something right or not or they've been told that they don't draw well, or they've been told that they don't sing well, and somebody just came along with their little hammer and just smashed that fucker flat, and I hate seeing that. I just absolutely think that that's just one of the cruelest things you can do in the world is to not be supportive of somebody's art. You know, it doesn't have to be your personal thing that you really like. You just, it's just basic, uh, you know, civility. I see a lot of things and I think, ew, I wouldn't hang out on my living room wall, but it's not about my living room wall, is it? So, no, I really, I'm not using these blues up very fast, so it does actually match. There's another one, inclined plane. Got a really pink upside down wagon here, which is more interesting than the one on the other side. Now, here's a crazy thought for you. What if you took these little drawings and you got a nice permanent marker with a good tip on it, and what if you then use that to augment them? You know, you could take some of these little drawings and you could have turned this upside down and put a little kid in this wagon. Or you could, oh, it's almost a hot pink, isn't it? Yeah, it's too red. That'll work. There's the next one. And I've got two boxes of these cards here, and one was a brighter palette, and the other one was burgundies and black and beige and pink. So, you know, I've got maybe ten colors of cards, and one of them found a match, right? All right, now we've got a tool and a scissors on one side. Now I have a friend who's really into spinning and weaving, and when I see something that's got a little sheep picture in it, I put them aside all year long. And then at the end of the year, I usually have 10 or 12 really good ones, and that's one of her little Christmas gifts is I make her some little handmade card. Because she's got lots of spinning and weaving friends, and that way they can uh, chat back and forth with each other and use their cards. So now I've got this, uh, I've got this lady concentrating away here using her fulcrum and her scissors. And it's got this blue. See, not much to it. And it's a pleasant, especially if you find five or six of these books, just put them away in your closet. Buy the cards the next time you see them on sale for 40% off or whatever. And then, um, you know, it's just you're stuck at home for a couple days with a cold or, you know, you just want a little something to do in a hotel room when you're stuck, you know, traveling and, you know, TV is just so awful. Who wants to do that? There's the next one. Let's see if I can hold it up and you can see the little picture. I'm not worried about... Um, copyright infringement on these because you you bought the book you're not reproducing them um, you know a one-off on art you know, I'm not that worried about it especially